Hey guys, Elijah Judah back here with another video today, and today we're going to be talking about the Black Panther Party. So, let's get started. So we're going to talk about Bobby Seale. Well, earlier this week, I went to go see Bobby Seale up at Colorado CU Boulder. And meeting Bobby Seale was an amazing experience. Obviously, I look up to the Black Panthers, as you can see. But it wasn't as amazing as I thought it was going to be. In fact, it was a little disappointing. And the reason being is because Bobby Seale acted completely different and the opposite of radical as he used to be. And I was so confused on why. And so then he ended up doing a speech. Here's a little clip of the speech he did. My objective was, if I capture the imagination of the people, then I can organize them into a political electoral machine. That's what I was at, from Jump Street. That's why we created a political party. See, people always say, black Panthers, this, black Panthers. To get about the politics of what I was structuring, what I was putting together. So, and the thing about it was Bobby Seale said Huey P. Newton really didn't do anything for the Black Panther Party. In fact, he said Huey P. Newton is not actually a co-founder of the Black Panther Party. It's actually him. He was the one who founded the Black Panther Party. It was all him. Him, 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 me, me, me. That was essentially what he was saying the entire time. He was hating on Huey P. Newton. He was hating hard. And it was sad to see because it seemed bitter and it seemed like he was a little bit envious of Huey P. Newton's legacy compared to his. So let's dive deeper into Bobby Seale's life. So Bobby Seale, he was born October 22nd, 1936. He's the age of 81 years old. And Bobby Seale, the reason why this is so impactful and this is so discouraging for me was because Huey P. Newton was the one who actually made the Black Panther Party get to another level. Because when Huey P. Newton joined, prior to that for about a year's time, uh, the Black Panther Party was only about 50 people strong and it started, of course, in the state of California. And the thing about it, it was 50 people strong for one year, but once Huey P. Newton got started, it went from 200 people the next year to thousands of people all over the state of California and also around the entire U.S. And it had their three big leads, Fred Hampton, Eldridge Cleaver, and Huey P. Newton. And unfortunately, all three of them ended up either passing away or having to escape to another country. For example, Eldridge Cleaver had to escape to Vietnam. And this is sad to see because a brother had to escape. He couldn't even stay in America no more because they was out to put him in prison or even kill his brother. And of course, we know that Huey P. Newell, once he got out of prison, he ended up going into drugs and got became a drug addict and ended up dying from somebody on the street corner in the year 1989. And of course, Fred Hampton, he died at the age of 21 by the FBI through undercover agents that was a part of the Black Panther Party, killed him in his bed in front of his pregnant wife at the young age of 21 in his bed tragically murdered shot in the head and this is all sad but out of everybody of all these impactful black leaders who was a part of the black panther party there's one who still stands to this day and that is bobby seal but then the question is why is he alive but all of these his team players ended up dying why did all the other black panther leaders die well, it's because, for example, Bobby Seale, he didn't die because he, right after he ended up quitting the Black Panther Party, he went straight from being a Black Panther to going and trying to get votes in order to go into politics for the state of California. So he went from a radical movement uh, in order to make a statement for these Black Panthers to going straight into being a coon to this society as a whole, which is sad to see in itself. He went from trusting in our people to trusting in oppression. He went from trusting in the people to empower our history and where we come from, from going to the people who enslaved us in the first place. That's a sad thing to see and that's a sad representation of a black leader a lot of people look up to, including myself, and it was disappointing to see. The fact was, in, in this speech, he even said, Huey P. Newton didn't do a lot for the Black Panther Party. In fact, he didn't do a lot at all. He said that he did everything. He organized what was going on with the Black Panther Party. He organized how it was ran. He organized everything. And Huey P. No really didn't do anything today. except this one time where police came up to them and he started speaking about their rights and what they had as people, as black men who were standing on the street corner saying it was legal for them to hold shotguns. 
That's the only credit he gave to him the entire speech. Outside of that, he said UEP knew it wasn't a lot, he didn't do a lot for the organization, and he didn't do a lot as a black leader, essentially. But the funny thing is, UEP knew went to prison for a year straight, and people were fighting for him to get out. Well, why is that? I thought he didn't do anything for the organization. I thought he didn't do a lot for the organization. Obviously, he did a lot because people were standing up for him. They was doing marches, walks, and protests in order to make QEP Noon get out of prison so he could be able to keep fighting for his people. But no, QEP Noon was in prison. He was fighting for his people. And on top of that, he fought until he got out. And once he got out, Bobby Seale gave up on the Black Panther Party. Eldridge Cleaver was in another country not allowed to come back. And an upcoming Black Panther ended up dying named Fred Hampton. So Bobby Seale didn't even stick to his people or stick to his roots. He went straight into politics and forgot all about the Black Panther Party. The organization that quote unquote he created. That's not a team player. Loyalty till the end. So the thing about it is, come on, man. If you really care about your people, first of all, why are you making a speech on how you created the organization, you did everything for this organization? And on top of that, you said in the 1990s, you was received over $500,000 from these individuals creating a documentary on the Black Panther Party in the 1990s. So what happened to that money? I thought you said that you were using this money, money that you were getting from, I thought you said you were get, using this money that you got from the people that you were charging $10, $20 for us to even just get autographs from you or even things signed that were special to us uh, in order to create your own documentary film, your own biography of what happened in the Black Panther Party. Party. But you received five hundred thousand dollars in order to in order to have a documentary in nineteen nineties. What happened with all that income? What happened with all that money? Actually, it says that your net worth is. It says that your net worth is over one million dollars. Your net worth is over a million dollars, which means you're a millionaire. And you can't come up with a documentary on your own. You have to raise money for it. Are you really trying to raise money? Or are you just looking for a quick buck from the people because of your legacy? Do you really care about the people? Or are you caring about their money and their income and what they can give to you? That's not good. You're using your power in order to get what you want. You're not using your power in order to get what we need as people. The movement shouldn't have stopped from you because you're too old. Why did the movement stop? You need to keep pushing forward in order to make this movement keep going. I haven't heard nothing from you in the media, in the sources. In fact, why are you still alive? All your other people ended up dying for the cause. They ended up dying for their people. But you're the only one, ironically, who's still alive from the Black Panther Party today who's, re who's really an impact and the leader of the organization. Why is that? Well, because you really wasn't doing anything for it. I pay 100% homage and respect for all these people because you are real influence in my life obviously but the thing about it is are you really helping out the people now or are you really just looking for a quick buck in order to make your pockets feel safe and feel secure the fact of the matter is is come on if a young black brother like myself i'm 18 years old if a young black brother comes up to you and asks you uh, for just two three minutes of your time just to ask you some questions some personal questions you should give it to him i was one of the only black black people in that room in cu boulder who was there to see you i traveled all the way from downtown to come up to cu boulder in the mountains just to be able to meet one of my dreams one of my one of my uh one of my leaders that i looked up to one of one of the people who i influence and admire in order to keep pushing as a young social activist and a youth leader in my society and this is how you treat somebody like that especially a black man and then on top of that the people behind me asking for autographs when i asked you to ask just ask three questions for my youtube video all of them were white you should definitely show at least a little bit more special recognition to one of your black brothers and sisters especially somebody who's young and was influenced by you that's insulting and that was definitely discouraging as a whole so Bobby Sue, so you should definitely look into a mirror if you watch this video and definitely think about how you're going to help out your people and how, and how you can help out your community as a whole. Because right now it's looking like you're brainwashed and the white people are controlling you with income and money and politics and make yourself feel safe. Are you really for the people now or were you really ever for the people? Why are you the only one still alive? The one who's really fighting the cause dies for his people. Now what are you going to do for the people? All right, guys, this is Young Activist again, you know, Elijah Judah. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Link in the description below for both speeches I put in this video. Also, link in the description below for my social media accounts. Add me on social media. And, hey, power to the people, y'all. See you on the next video.